Mr. Gupta, ma'am. and students and nurses and ma'am presents over here. So today I'm here to just to give a short overview about what we are uh, gathered over from the theme to, uh, based on child abuse and POXO Act. So give an overview to all of our students about the child abuse and the POXO Act prevalent in. Starting with it, see what is the present problem statement? What is the statement, for, what is the present condition and scenario that what we have seen is that there are 140 per thousand, 14 percent of the age group of 3 to 18 years which were kicked, bitten, punched, hit with object, bitten up or threatened with a knife or a gun and abused in some and other or other ways in one year. 85 percent of younger than five years and 45 percent were infants under one year which have been reported to face the abuse. About 10% of injuries in emergency were due to abuse among under 5 years of child. 15% admitted for burn due to abuse and 50% of fractures are reported to be under 1 year due to abuse faced by the children. Death rate is 6%, 6% due to the abuse, abusive conditions which uh, results into the fatal death of the children. In 55% immediate family members were perpetrators. See the huge amount, the maximum uh, known person, they are the maximum person which we known are the known person, 55%, which are the immediate family members. Father, 21%, mother, 21%, boyfriend of mother, 9%. Means some or some other person is in contact with the children. Types of abuse we can classify into a physical abuse, emotional, psychological abuse, neglect and sexual abuse. Abusers belong to all ethnics, religion, educational status, occupational status and socioeconomic groups. There is no differentiation regarding the status on, on uh, basis of religion, education or occupation. But they are definitely seen more among the poor due to increased number of crises in the life there are reasons like no economy, social background is poor, which result into support of stress. Increased violence in neighborhood, what they are seeing around about it, what is the uh, background around them, that, uh, that also causes effects on the mind of the person. Teenage and single parenthood and substance abuse. Now child abuse, substance abuse is a very common finding, which we have we seen in cases of child abuse. More than 90% of abusing parents have neither have neither psychotic nor criminal personality. They are lonely, unhappy, angry, young and single parents, unplanned pregnancy, little knowledge of child development, unrealistic expectation from the child. These are the backgrounds which result into the child abuse cases rise. 10 to 40% of abusing parents were themselves abused as children. So there is a lineage you seeing what we behave what we uh, absorb during the lifetime we that we impose on the other person physical abuse most likely seen in high risk children like premature infants infants with chronic medical conditions colicky babies children with behavioral problems high risk parents is responsible for care so low lower self-esteem poor impulse control, anti-social behavior. In these cases, they are more probably seen the cases of abuse. Physical neglect is another thing. Nutritional neglect is a very common cause of failure to thrive. So it is just not that the, it is only covers the abusive part. It also controls the, it also covers the nutritional abuse. One is uh, given and the other is, is just stopped for the uh, proper nutrition. So that also comes as a part of the abuse which the free children are facing. Medical neglect by failure to pro uh, provide appropriate medical care, failure to provide schooling, adequate clothing and protection for environmental hazards, heat, cold. Neglect is roughly 50% of total cases and accounts for more, than de more deaths than really physical abuse happens. Now, acts of omission and commission. Emotional abuse. 
intentional verbal and behavioral acts that result into adverse emotional consequences rejection scapegoat assignment isolation criticism terrorizing by the caretaker these all ultimately result into the abusive emotional neglect this is one form of thing that we did do it doesn't it is not only the physical abuse which affects the child it is one of cause is the emotional abuse or emotional neglect which is also impact which also equally impacts over the children's mind and their health issues also poisoning one uh, syndrome is usually seen in uh, uh, yes it is a rare form but it has been reported is the munchausen disease by proxy in which the parents have an uh, anxiety to face to show the world uh, or to gain the attention of the world and in this gaining attention they somehow make their children disease in some or other way by po poisoning or creating diseases or creating some types of uh, infection just making them disease and disease so they can go they can uh, create or, or uh, uh, take the attention of the world or it may be in a monetary terms also so they can take the monetary terms and gain the uh, attention of the world and gain some monetary terms so that is the one reported syndrome battered baby syndrome physical injury unexplained unexplainable implausible we should have in the back of mind that this case may be a case of battered baby child syndrome the existence of bruises scars which are in different stages of healing it is not one time it is in the different one is healed the other is healing and the other third one is the fresh one then the treating physician should have in the mind that this case may be of a child abuse case bruises will be most common on back buttocks and genitalia many times parents get irritated by the toilet training small small kids they get uh, they get irritated when the uh, children are not able to be toilet trained well and at that time they give punishment in the form of punishment not saying to report the case this is the common thing but the pediatrician should consider it is their sole responsibility to report such cases to the police burns small small burns are very commonly seen 10% of cases out of total cases of burns shape pattern and burn diagnostic of geometric pattern they are totally conclusive and they are very much significance about how cigarette burns match stick burns they are just been pointed burns in type of punishment so these is small small injuries should be kept in note in during the primary examination when even a nurse faces it or when the primary person in the psc it they come to the chair and they they see there are small small burns healing some are healed some are fresh they should keep in mind that this may be a case where the child are facing abuse by some or other person in their own home it may be their step mother it can be can step father it can be their grandfather or the grandmother and we should not be thinking that uh, if she if a child is at home he is a safe person it's not the case presently we are seeing several cases that it is totally not the scenario that children at home are totally safe yes they are safe but when such cases are faced that we have to keep in mind that children are not safe at home by their own blood relationships also well demarcated circular immersion burn on buttock and perineum hand or feet is abused in infants and young children should be noted down and these are the different types of burn marks which we can see like hot plate now see the uh, typical demarcation the characteristic of the uh, burns or the injury they indi uh, indicate what uh, type of substance has been used see the car cigarette lighter curling iron it will be a rod shaped mark steam iron a total impression mark of the steam iron are seen knives grid cigarette tox immersion hand or immersion into the boiling water some children or feet are immersed into the boiling water just for a type of punishment in some ways so these types of injuries when they come should be taken forward see an example of a figure showing the injury marks and the burn marks in the foot trauma to head 95% of serious intracranial injuries in infants are due to abuse in one or other form in 29% of cases of abuse there is injury to head face or cranial content cases present as coma convulsion apnea and increased intracranial pressure and they are treated on the medical background uh, uh, ignoring the underlying condition that the child must have faced abuse in one or other form so to just to raise the awareness of these things we have all collected today 
Shaken baby syndrome, a very common type of punishment with the parents or the, some relatives also gave to the uh, students or just to take enjoyment for the home is to just to shake the small babies and just severely shake the babies. In that there is a triad of symptoms is when the babies are severely shaken. It is bleeding of the retina of the eyes. The small, small blood vessels just burst open and there is bleeding in the retina. Subdural hematomas are seen in the shaking, in the severe shaking and edema in the brain which may result into the convulsions and coma all occurring in the absence of recent car accident or clearly explanation now this is an example how they are shake the infant just it can be a type of punishment in severe crying of the baby sometimes the parents get irritated by this long term crying of the baby and just to uh, just to relieve their irritation they shake the baby in such a way that they hurt the babies and abuse the babies resulting into the edema and the subdural hematoma so this is a very common and the, the frustration of the parents in some other form they result into the injury of the or the abuse of the child. This is a uh, microscopic finding showing the subdural hematomas and the edema of the brain. Intra-abdominal injuries, second most commonest cause of death in better children are due to the intra-abdominal injuries. There may be no external injuries. The, they took the uh, uh, gain in this point that they know that abdominal are part of soft tissue and there won't be external injury. They must, there will be a lot of internal injuries in cases of intra-abdominal cases. Bruises due to fist about one centimeter, three to four in curve may be present. And it may lead into the internal hemorrhages, laceration of spleens, lacerations of the intestine, which may result into hemorrhage. Rupture of liver or spleen is the most common internal injuries. Fractures, second thing are seen, is the highly specific to child abuse, especially they are due to forcefully pulling and pressing. They are having cases when there has been shoulder dislocation just by pulling the hand and snatching it up. Very commonly, uh, the, uh, the clinician faced the shoulder pull out and the uh, accompanying person just ignoring that it was, uh, he was just sl slipping down, he was going down. But they are, these cases are to be covered under the child abuse and they should be reported by the treating physicians so that the awareness increases. Pulling of hair which may result into a patchy alopecia, hairs broken at various levels are the uh, indication that the hairs were pulled out snatched out just to give a punishment type to the child. This is a type of x-ray showing a epiphyseal fracture. Other real conditions are the cord death syndrome which mimics the type of child abuse which should not should be ignored away. Usually between one to six months maybe below two years and it may be due to suffocation, infection and hyperparathyroidism hyper para para and it is a pathological infection so these are to be meant to be ruled out. Abandoning of infant, very commonly reported cases, infants are seen abandoned up and it has to be said that this is a punishable act under 317 IPC with an imprisonment of 7 years with fine or both. Child, child will know 12 years are protected under the law. It is proof that the intention was wholly abandoning. Sexual abuse, 50% of abuse. Sexual play is viewing or touching of the genitalia, buttocks, chest of pre-adolescent children separated by not more than four years in which there has been no force or coercion. So even are they, what they do is that to sexual abuse starts from sexual play. At which sexual abuse the first thing that it starts is with the sexual play when they say that it's to the child and they set in the mind that it is just a play. Sexual abuse involving a child in any act that is intended for sexual gratification of an adult. These are all types of sexual abuse. Any activity that the child before the age of legal consent, that is the 18 years, that is for sexual gratification of an adult or significant older child. It also includes oral genital, genital genital, genital rectal, hand genital, hand rectal or hand to breast contact. So contact in any form is covered under the section of sexual abuse. Now what are the abusers, How, who can be, who all are uh, just suppose or suggestive that they can be abuser most commonly. They are the servants. See the list. See they are the teachers. They are the drivers. Close blood contacts, cousins, uncles. Sexual abuse by stepfather is five times higher than the natural father. And symptoms are vaginal, penile or rectal pain, erythema, discharge, bleeding, 
chronic dysuria, aneurysis, constipation or encoparesis. Premature puberty in a female. These symptoms when are reported to a clinician should be acknowledged and child abuse, a case of child abuse should be kept in the back of the mind. Now behavior specific way of abuse. Sexualized ab activity with peers, animals or object. These are the behavioral changes, behavior specific when they have the cases of abusers are reported. They are not only the uh, abusers with abuse the child, but they have uh, sexualized activity with other peers also, animals also and objects also. Seductive behavior and age appropriate sexual knowledge and curiosity. Non-specific behaviors of the abusers can be side gestures, fear of an individual or place, nightmares. The child, when they, you see that they are having nightmares, they are just uh, waking up in the night and they are frightened in the night, seeing symptoms of anxiety. Parents should have in the back of the mind and should consult the child about asking the behavior change and why these symptoms are being observed. Sleep disorders are very common. Withdrawn, stress, poor school performance. Good teachers take note of the poor school performance and they notify the students. They call the parents. They just take the importance that uh, this child was bright in few days and now she, he is not showing that result. Why? So that should be the back of the mind of, the, of a good teacher and of a good parents. Running away, self-mutilation. These, when we see these behavioral change in the children's, we should have in the back of the mind to interact with the children properly. And then the forensic interviewer, we roles of uh, uh, us comes. Now a short overview over the POXO Act, what all, what all are included in it and what are the punishment within this act. This act is to prevent sexual exploitation and sexual abuse of children first. Now it includes like the inducement or coercion of a child to engage in any unlawful sexual activity. Then it also includes the exploitative use of children in prostitution or other unlawful sexual practices. It includes the exploitative use of children in pornographic performances and materials, taking children only for, only for the pornography. That part is also included in the POXO Act. It prescribes punishment for sexual offenses against children for sexual assault, sexual harassment and pornography. Now establishing a special court for trial comes under the jurisdiction of the POXO Act. Just to uh, uh, define simple, simple terms used in this POXO Act, we will go. A child is defined any person, all persons, male, female or intersex below 18 years of age. Sexual assault, what do we mean by saying a word of sexual assault is it touches or make the child touch with sexual intent, vagina, penis, anus, breast or does any other act which involves physical contact. That is the labeling or the term defined as sexual assault. And without penetration, the punishment goes three to five years with fine. When it, the act is penetrative, it penetrates his penis and other object or part of body to any extent into the vagina, mouth, urethra or anus of a child or makes the child do so with him or any other person, manipulates any part of the body of the child so as to cause penetration, applies his mouth to the private parts or make the child do such thing. These are included in the penetrative sexual assault. And then comes the aggravated sexual assault or penetrative aggravated assault which includes offenses done by any person on responsibility like police, armed forces personnel, public servant, staff or hospital, at remand homes, educational religious institution or other place of work under jurisdictional area. Gang sexual assault is covered under aggravated sexual assault. Use of deadly weapon, fire, corrosive, causing grievous hurt or injury to the sexual organs of the child. Uh, they are all included into the aggravated act of penetrative assault. Now what is sexual harassment? It includes sexual intent with the intent of using words, sound, gesture or some showing object or part of body to be seen or heard by a child. It also, it also includes the child to exhibit any part of its own body showing any object in any form or media for pornographic purpose. Repeatedly or constantly follows, watches or contacts 
directly or through electron or electronic digital or any means or entices a child for pornographic purpose these all types of activities are labeled as sexual harassment under the act of poxo act one very important thing that we should remember that even the sexual harassment of a child is a cognizable and a non bailable offense punishment which we have are co the, uh, covered under the section of poxo act under the sexual harassment there is a imprisonment for a term which may extend to 3 years and is also liable to fine use of children for pornographic purpose first time it is imprisonment for 5 years and liable to fine and if the if the act is repeated for the second time the extension term of imprisonment goes for 7 years and under fine storage of pornographic material related to child that is also punishable for 3 years and fineable sexual assault punishment goes extends for not then less than 3 years and may extend to 5 years and is also liable to fine aggregative sexual assault when it is under the aggregative sexual sexual assault imprisonment of for a term not less than 5 years and may exceed to 7 years and is also liable to fine penetrative sexual assault goes not less than 7 years and even it may extend to life imprisonment with fine and when the last is the aggravated penetrative sexual assault it is not less than 10 years and may extend to imprisonment for life and is also liable to fine so we can see that we have a lot of we are almost the poxo act covers each and every portion and each and every act and is uh, it is heavily punished for each act is heavily punished under the poxo act 12 and still the problem is not unsolved so it's further seeing what we can do and what we should do we will see in the further lectures thanks to all thank you